hello 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 everybody once again welcome back to the channel i am in a very cheerful mood because yes the topic drew your attention many people have asked questions about how to get to south africa as an iron to take the NCLEX examination you know it's the only center we have in africa unfortunately so yes we have a guest and she's one of upc's products she enrolled with us and successfully passed her in class one time and i'm happy and proud to be here she's actually a familiar face if you have been on our channel for some time you've seen some promotional videos and testimonial yes this is one of them this is lisa my name is Priscilla Kum. i'm a registered nurse from ghana americanized over the years and practice nursing in usa and my goal is to get all foreign nurses or all international nurses to usa to also go through the process seemingly without any stress so lisa welcome to our channel but before then if anybody is interested in taking the boards or writing NCLEX USA, please head to our website on www.usrmpasswordconsult.com, register, and then we can assist you achieve this goal. If you want to write NCLEX, we are here to help you. If you just want to enroll for the NCLEX class and you don't want to enroll for the whole UPC length and breadth, we are here. We have our UPC NCLEX Academy to help you sail through as well. You will hear all about what it takes somebody to go write NCLEX in South Africa. There are so many centers around you. Go onto the website and find out where there's an NCLEX center all over the world and choose the nearest one that is convenient to you. So, Lisa, welcome to our channel and thanks for thank making time for Thank me. you, Madam Priscilla. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very grateful. <laughs> okay, good. Please introduce yourself to our viewers. My name is Lisa Bepen. I'm a Ghanaian nurse. I work at um, Lister Hospital currently. And then I started my NCLEX journey. That was last two years, 2022, in November. That was when I met um, UPC. So I messaged them and then they told me about the process. At first, I was jittery because I felt it was going to be a very long, long process. And then <laughs> I felt I should just choose short, short ways like the UK. Uh -huh. But on second thought i felt it would be worth it if i just go straight just have patience and i knew there would be a lot of work involved up and downs even though most of the up and downs were taken up by upc i knew there was going to be a lot of involvement but by god's grace i came out and then i was successful so that's a little about me i'm currently in ghana working yes okay. and then okay thank you very much for telling us about yourself so you happen to write your NCLEX in south africa you want to walk us through what the pre pre processes whatever you had to do documentation wise okay. what did you do was the first thing after you finally got your att and chose a date so after i got my um att i think i got my att in october then um i contemplated and then felt like if i chose the date the next year in february that is 2024 in february that was when maybe because i'm doing the process on my own i would have gathered some money and then prepared for my flight and everything so after um i booked a date i booked the date for 20th february 2024 um i was contacted by one of um upc staff who told me what i would need and um how the travel is going to go the money involved and everything so i knew i had to get my um my passports ready i had to get um a vaccination card the vaccination card ready the COVID vaccination card the yellow no fever the yellow fever card yeah so i had to get all that ready unless if i had waited till let's say february or getting to 20th and then i'd gone for the yellow fever it would be impossible to travel so i did all that in um i especially the yellow fever vaccination i did it in november uh -huh, so that i wouldn't waste time as for the booking of the flight with south africa we know that they brought this visa free say i wouldn't have to um apply for a visa for south africa so what i had to do was to search for flights and even that Madam Vida helped me out. So we searched for flights. And then, as at that time, the flights were a little bit cheaper. 
because I, I was going to book for February and then I paid in November. So I got um, a cheaper flight. It was almost in Ghana cities. In Ghana cities, I would say it was almost um, 7,000 cities for my in and out, my all round trip. Uh -huh. But later on in like December and January, when I checked, those flights had increased to around 10,000 plus. Uh -huh. So I was very grateful because Madam Vada advised me that if I booked earlier, then traveling and then everything will be easier for me. But if I waited till January or even in February to book, then that means I was going to incur loads of cost. So I took her advice and then I booked my flight in February. So after booking the flight, then I had to look for where to sleep. So as to where to sleep, their choice was either hotel or Airbnb. Uh -huh. So I looked through the hotel list and I was like, no, maybe my money, my money would not be up to. So then I checked the Airbnb site too, and I noticed that there were a lot of Airbnbs around. Uh -huh. But I had to look for one that was safer uh -huh. and had a um, security also around and everything because i'm going to south africa for the first time so i spoke to madame vida and she was even worried why i want to choose an airbnb instead of a hotel because at least the hotel has all the security okay but based on my own financial <laughs> status yeah. i told her that <laughs> i would want like i would want to get money for my um airbnb or hotel and at least get some money aside because i don't know whether i'll be paying something at the airport i'll have to show proof of funds and all that so I ended up choosing an Airbnb, which was very, very, very safe. Very, very safe. The name of the Airbnb is Cozy Stay. They are at Santen, and their neighborhood is like um, an estate. So they have this security men, policemen all around. So I was very happy I chose the Airbnb in the end because it was very safe. I didn't encounter any problems um, around that side i could get access to whatever i want whether it's a shop i want to buy food or anything there was everything around me the airbnb at santon i paid 15 50 almost 15 dollars for a day so i i booked for for five days so that i to cover uh -huh, when i'll be coming and all that so then i ended up paying um around 75 dollars which was okay so I was worried at first, but when I got to speak to the host and all the people handling the place, I was certain that that place was a good place. And they also made provisions for um, a taxi to come for me right from the hotel to their place. And the host was very welcoming, very warm. She come and check on me every morning. So it was very pleasant. But I would say that being in a hotel too would have been safer because most of the people I met there were also in hotels uh -huh, and they were also safe. So whether you choose a hotel or an Airbnb, it just depends on where you are going and the people you are going to meet and how safe the place is. So you gather your documents of COVID card, yellow fever card, your passport, and did you go to the South Africa consulate or embassy in Ghana in Accra by yourself or did you email that to them? How was the process like? Okay, so um, when I got the COVID card, my other documents ready, the yellow paper card, I didn't go to the consulate because they've um, canceled the visa processing for, uh -huh, for Ghana and some other countries. I didn't go there. I spoke to Vida and then Vida even confirmed to me that I don't have to go there because she spoke to even the airline where she bought my ticket and they said that because South Africa there is visa free now I don't have to send my documents anywhere but I would have to um, some, add up certain documents like if I have a bank um, I'll have to get my bank uh, report uh -huh. I would have to also get um, a, a copy of um, where I'm going let's say cozy stay where I'm staying, the amounts they charge me. So I have to print that one out. I'll, I also have to get a travel plan 
so that i'll show it to whoever so that in case i get there or i get to the airport and they're asking why am i going what am i going to do there i'll just show it to them i'm going to write and clicks maybe this is my document this is i'm writing it here maybe i'm writing it in something everything will show uh-huh so that they'll know that i'm going to write an exam my travel plan um where i'll be um my uh, final destination um whether a taxi is coming to pick me to wherever i'm going to leave the airbnb everything a map of the area where i'm going to so i had all that in a file uh -huh, so that if anything i'll just remove it and show it to them uh -huh. so i didn't go to the consulate mm. okay so you just bought the tickets and then you showed up at the airport yes just to chip in here that luckily ghana has become visa free to south africa and i don't know why other african countries would demand visa for a fellow african we need to have a free border where everybody can cross and transact business within the same african continent and we hope one day we can get there so you booked the dates you paid for your, um, your airbnb yeah. and then you took a flight there how much is the tickets and what airline did you use i used rwanda a the ticket fare was seven thousand cities fair for a round fair in and out we had one stop we stopped at uh, kigali when we were going it was just a few minutes and we joined the another plane to south africa then when coming back to it was two stops kigali and then this nigerian airport azikiwe i've forgotten the name it wasn't there wasn't any delays or anything and with rwanda air too when i was going they didn't demand most of my friends were saying that with other airlines like um, Ethiopian and other airlines, they demand you to deposit maybe a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars before you leave, you leave um, the country. But for Rwanda Air, eh, as at when I was leaving, they just demanded for my documents, but they never demanded for me to deposit any amount. They just needed to know where I was going to. So then you arrived in your Airbnb. How far was it from the Enclave Center? And what city did you write in? I wrote in Johannesburg, Santen, inside Santen. My Airbnb was just like 25 minutes away from where I would write. And where I wrote was in the, they call the place the Santen Mall. It's a very big mall in Santen. Uh -huh. So that's where the NCLEX office is also situated there. Uh, but it was at the sixth floor. So it's just right in Santin, to speak. Okay, so did you go there days before to see uh, the place? Did you arrive? How many days did you arrive before your examination day? I arrived three days before my examination day. So um, I arrived before a Sunday. So on the Saturday, I decided to go to the town and then see for myself uh -huh, around the area and all that so i went to the something more i went to roam about but at that time i i asked to see where specifically i'll be writing my exams but i was told by the security men that if we are not having any exam day as of that day they don't allow anyone to go there up there uh -huh. so they just told me that i'm at the right place and that um when I'm ready to write on Tuesday, which was on the 20th, I can just walk in and I'll meet representatives who would guide me through the process. So I I knew where I was going to, but I didn't see the place uh -huh, till Tuesday. So Tuesday, your examination time, you made it there. What, what time was the examination and how many hours did you go there prior to the exams? Okay, so my examination um, time I had to get there 30, 30 minutes before um, we start the examination. But I got there around, um, let's say, 10 minutes to 7. So when I got there, they hadn't opened anything. They were all inside. The examiners were inside, but they had locked everywhere. So I just stayed out, had my earpiece in my ears, just listening to some music. And then I was just whiling away time whilst they came to call us and then tell us what we should do so your examination time was 7 30. so my examination time was around 8. okay 8 so when they called you guys to the sixth floor what was the process did they take an id card did they do fingerprints give you a locker just walk me through it 
Okay, so when we got upstairs, that's to the sixth floor, when they opened up, the first thing they um, asked us to do is to show our passports. So we showed our passports and they compared to it to a certain information on their computer. They called us one by one. They did the fingerprint section for us. They took a picture of our faces again. And then we had a thorough check, a very thorough check. <laughs> A thorough check and they made uh, it known to us that this check even when you are in the examination hall and you go outside to go and pee or use the washroom and come back you are going to do that same thorough check and it's adding up to your time so a very thorough check if you are wearing big earrings you have to take the earrings off if you are wearing anything that covers your face like a wig that covers your face you'd have to draw it back and tie it up so it's just like i felt i was in ghana at the moment i felt a head nurse was just standing in front of me and telling me your uniform is too short this is uh -huh. so they are very they will make you comfortable but they are very strict you see that they are really doing their work uh -huh. but you will not be terrified they will not make you terrified yeah but they were very strict checks. So they looked at your passport. Did they do any fingerprints or anything? Yeah, yeah. I said they did fingerprints and too. They did fingerprints and yeah, they did all that. Check passport. Did fingerprints and took a picture of me again. Yes. Okay. And gave me a locker key where I could place my stuff. And then with this one, they said you can't get access when you have a phone or any device. They have a, a zip lock that do um, put the, um, the device inside. And they have a way of detecting if you have opened that zip lock. So in case you go for break, you don't have to touch that zip lock and open, your, um, open it and take out your phone for anything. It's prohibited. And you have to make sure it is in that lock till you are done. Unless if you are done and then you bring it back and there is something wrong, then you have an issue with you you enter the room describe the setting in the room the computers or the partitions <laughs> cameras describe that <laughs> okay so we enter the room and then um, before you are even allowed to enter the room you have to go through checks again <laughs> so we wow. went through another fingerprinting that was just fingerprinting and then they'll check you they'll let you like touch your body see whether there's nothing hidden before you even get access to the room so with the room let's say before you enter the examiners have a, there's a partition for the examiners with a clear glass so they are sitting behind they are sitting behind it with their computers and whatever devices they are using and then when they give you access to enter the computers are, are just there like when you enter a, a cafe how the computers have been uh -huh. everybody has his or her own computer so they have numbers maybe they'll say lisa sit at number 20 maybe um celestine sit at number one so they'll arrange everybody to sit at their and when you sit down they have um something printed out a document printed out for you to read and they have oh, they also have they said if you want to use an earpiece or something because of noise they also have all that available uh -huh. then you get your seat and then you sit down so the room is is not really like terrifying it's a warm welcoming room uh -huh. but just that there are some of their procedures you make you feel like hey these people are being so strict yeah are there any cameras are there any supervisors hovering in the room or are they outside watching you so um there are a lot of cameras in the room a lot of cameras in the room and then the supervisors for them they made it clear to us that they'll be coming around so they made it known to us that they'll be coming around so they came around on like let's i saw them like twice they came around to look around uh -huh. then they'll come and they'll not come to you and see what you are doing but they'll just be hovering around you yeah that's that's what they did okay so then was there a board and a marker given to you they're supposed to write or calculate stuff on yeah, we had um, a, a, a board, a board and, and then a marker. Uh, the marker is not erasable, so it will just help you um, put down whatever you want to put down and then do your work. And then they tell you that 
you don't have to erase it so whatever is on it just leave it for them you don't have to erase it so there's a, bo a board there is like a plastic something and then a marker for you to write whatever you want to write and whenever you need them you just raise up your hands and then you don't look left or right when you raise up your hands you just look where they are sitting and then they come to or they show you a board and tell you to come or they tell you to sit and wait so you just um, listen to them and then do what they say if they tell you to sit you sit uh -huh. if they tell you to move then you move yeah okay so, so let's go to the questions themselves the endless <laughs> questions so that the, the test started where i'm sure there were some people who are already in the room who had already started people are in the room before you join them so the computer comes on and then how was the examination the questions was it something you expected were there familiar questions was it getting harder as you go how many questions okay. did you encounter me when i entered i entered with a group of people i'm sure we were the first badge for the day so we entered together but like we sat differently so um uh we went through the procedure the computer come and tell you about the NCLEX what to do what to expect uh -huh. then after that you click next and then it tells you that your test is about to begin okay so my test began and then the truth is with the questions i was getting i felt i was failing of course <laughs> <laughs> i felt the questions i was told that i have to get to harder and difficult questions and know that i'm passing this in clicks uh -huh. but with the questions i was getting i started really slowly that was something bad i did i started really slowly because i wanted to be meticulous uh-huh but i realized that sister lisa if you don't <laughs> rise up and then start running you lose the game so i was very slow from number one to like number 35 then i around that side the truth is in an hour in an hour i had done only like 12 questions in an hour almost an hour because i was wasting time taking my time so then the angel of the lord came to tell me that i have to <laughs> you have to have pick to up the speed <laughs> i have to pick up the speed I'm and told me that when i'm solving questions at home i'm able to solve like um 85 questions in sometimes less than two hours or two and a half but this one why am i taking my time so i had to just start carrying the speed, yeah mm -hmm. yeah so um i started question one question two we are climbing but i'm like the questions i'm seeing maybe this computer wants to fail me so it's giving me very very cheap questions I was seeing the questions as like normal everyday questions, practical questions that our tutors have taken us through. And then they are not questions I've seen before, but like there are questions that I can apply to whatever I have learned to. Uh -huh. So I was saying that these questions, where they are going, I'm sure I'm failing, but I, I still have to put my trust in God. So I went to question 50 and at 50, the computer said, do you want to just at the washroom or take a break or something nice and i clicked yes because i needed a break <laughs> so i clicked yes went out i went through the same checks again they checked me again and then i went out that is they took my fingerprints and everything went through every check again and then i went out to the washroom so at the washroom i went to dance to god i said god i'm dancing you have to make me pass i will not cry so <laughs> i like that i like that i really like that it's a way and to I, reset and regroup and regather your thoughts and go back in a different mode yeah yes and go back because i do want to be sad mm -hmm. so after that i went back to the example they did every check again and all this is adding up to your time i did every check again and then i went to sit down and i was at question 51. so then question 51 i was seeing quite simple simple straightforward questions ngn questions and i was like no god where, the, where these questions are sending me i feel i'm failing so i went then 85 i was expecting to go to 86 
then this computer just shut down then i felt i was shattered <laughs> it could mean anything you never know <laughs> yes uh, <stop> wow. <laughs> the feeling at that time was it was so bad i've never felt that way in my life before because i've i felt i've come all the way from ghana to south africa to just feel because the questions i was getting like how sometimes say ma yakut and others have been saying they are straightforward and then if you know your content you don't even have to waste time like how i was wasting time from question because i the answer was there that i had to choose but i wanted to read through go over again and i was wasting time uh -huh. but when i sped up from my like, question 35 going i was having the feeling that the questions i was meeting are questions that like if i was in my house solving a kill bank it's just like that uh-huh so when i got to 85 we are always told that we should expect to stop at 150 so that's in my mind so as i was going i was saying that whether i stop at 130 140 150 yeah that is it uh-huh but 85 i wasn't expecting to stop at 85 at all so 85 then my computer shut down gave me some questionnaire to fill and then that was it i had to get up my exams was over and it was around two and a half hours two hours 20 minutes or something two hours so that means that one hour that i used for those the 12 questions when i sped up i used almost one and a half hours to get to 85 questions okay so tell me <laughs> about the case studies and then we'll come and talk about english you are a medical law student you have been dedicated we had no doubt that you passed so you overstudied that is the truth and that is why you saw it at cheap nobody watching this should think english is cheap and go and relax lisa is an exceptional student she's been preparing for this for days and months and don't go and say english is cheap because she had it easy everybody's question is different you will all start at the same time but the question one that i will get will not be the question one that you will get we all have different paces if you have to be slow to be able to maybe to be meticulous to pass go for it if you think you're a fast reader and you're good go for it but endless is not cheap lisa overstudied <laughs> oh. she took her time to book a test she was studying 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 and that's how come she said it was cheap but endless you need to be very clinical you need to very be very analytical before you can get the questions so the case studies this is new generation endless ngn started april 2023 yes please tell me about your case studies and how many questions is it and how many sub questions were in there so the case studies came in different form so there were some that didn't come as let's say we are treating hypertension and then they tell you um a patient came to the hospital with a bp of this one they link they link the hypertension to diabetes and they can even link the diabetes to an ulcer on a patient's leg and how to manage it and they can even link it to anything like even end of life care or palliative care so um at first my colleagues were, were telling us that most of the times it's just hypertension then they ask you questions they give you a passage and they're like a comprehension something then they ask but now they link they link it they link the the topics uh -huh. so it's not just one topic it's not just um a, one a diagnosis topic. there are so many diagnoses in one question yes yes so many diagnoses in one question so you have to read but when you know your content you're able to link them up you know that maybe someone who has maybe at distance or cushions the person can um, have infections so then when during the passage maybe they can bring a wbc count that is high then you know that oh this disease can link to an infection so this is what it can cause but if you don't know that then that is the issue you see what i'm telling you about lisa don't <laughs> As you see how she has linked everything <laughs> and realistically on a field as a nurse in the u.s no single patient has one diagnosis yeah. i have never seen it and it does not exist one person will have 10 15 20 diagnoses and their medication is like 100 tablets when you're passing the morning meds yes. so realistically what you see in the questions is what happens on the ground yes. multiple diagnoses multiple yes. surgery surgeries in the past and a whole lot go ahead yes. please and then um with the when it comes to the medications like this they always want you to know the side effects 
they want you to know the side effects, the management, and the contraindications. And then when it comes to the lab values, the lab values most of the times is provided in the passage for all the NGNs that I saw. All the lab values were provided. All the lab values were provided. And then there was another type of NGN. That one, maybe they'll give you different types of passages in one, one question. Let's say passage one has maybe a patient who came to the hospital and has diarrhea, blah, blah, blah. Then another one, a patient who came with um, hemorrhage. And then uh, BP is this one. Um, let's say BP is 50 something. And then another patient maybe um, who is um, having um, hypoglycemia, showing signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. Then they'll tell you to prioritize. Maybe the first question they'll ask, you prioritize. Then the second question that they'll ask you, they will tell you that so maybe um among these patients what and what are you going to do for this one first so it's a different different group of like ngs put together and they are asking you specific questions on them so that was the different kind of ngn i went to miss because the all case the study time, you mean yes the case study because mm -hmm. all the times i've been solving case studies i've never met a question like that like with different different types of short patients short in cases. one mm -hmm. in one uh -huh. but they would ask you specific questions related to them so that was the different side i met that was a different kind of ngn case studies i met i never saw um those kind of questions before Wow. Yeah. They have a million questions out there. So if you're even doing past questions, you go and see a brand new question that you've never come across in your studies. And this is when the clinical learning comes in. If you know the content, then you can apply it. You not you don't have to see the question be like, oh, I know this question. They will yes. change it up for you and it's up to you to apply your clinical knowledge yes. to it. Yes. So your examination finished, you came outside. What did you do as soon as you came out of the hall? Did they give your things <laughs> back to you or what did they do? Okay. Yeah. So my examination was completed and um, I answered the questionnaire. I raised up my hand. They told me to come forward. I came forward. They did checks again on me and then they, they told me congratulations. <laughs> and then they gave me my key to my locker. I went back for the lock they gave to me. I placed my phone inside. So I went back for it. I gave it to them. They checked through my passport again and then they handed everything back to me and then i had to leave the examination hall and go back down so that was the end of my examination went back down to the ground floor on uh, the ground floor i decided to walk around a bit because i was becoming very very sad i was feeling very very sad because I felt that, oh gosh, I've come to South Africa all the way to feel low. The money and the stress. <laughs> and then I started visiting YouTube sites as to how I can check fast, fast. <laughs> check your results, the trick, the Pearson trick. The trick. Mm -hmm. And then, um, unfortunately for me, I hear the Pearson trick doesn't really work. So when I check, it didn't work for me. And I... <laughs> He just fainted at that point. <laughs> you just buried yourself. Like I failed. I'm coming back again next two months. <laughs> Start so calculating the tickets involved and all that. Yeah, oh. it's very realistic. So, I've been there. We all did it. <laughs> so I went to sit at one of the, the place is very big. It's a big mall. So I went to sit. They have a lot of restaurants where where you can. So I went to sit at one side, and I was just staring into thin air. Just staring. I had not even eaten at that point, but I wasn't hungry. I wasn't hungry. Mm. I was just, you know, <laughs> just screaming. <laughs> oh, that is so sad. Yeah, this thing, this examination is a, it's a life-changing examination. So you need the moral, the, the mental compact to be yes. there. You need a whole support system. So some of you, if you come yes. out, it's ideal to call your support yes. system or whoever has been encouraging you yes. to the journey. Call yes. them yes. Yes. and tell them your feelings. And if they are good people, they'll be able to encourage you a little yes. bit. <laughs> so then I decided at a point I decided that what can come can come. So mm -hmm. let me get something and eat. So I got something and went back. I took a boat back to the Airbnb. 
So um, I got to the Airbnb and then I started calling my family, uh-huh, telling them how it went. I called my tutors. My tutors, I think Saima was the one who even called me. So he called me and he was like, I should stop what I'm doing. I should stop. <laughs> <laughs> I should stop what I'm doing uh, at first. I told him that he doesn't you know. Why is it that he's having so much faith in me? So we know said, how hey. you are. <laughs> we know your performance academically and how you've been very uh, uh, ready for this day. So we we had no doubts, to be frank oh. with you. <laughs> when I had lost all hope, Saima was the one telling me that what I'm doing, I'm, I'm joking with myself. So I should just stop what I'm doing and go and sleep. I said, Saima, how can I sleep? I can't sleep. Oh. So I came to lie down on my bed. I lay down straight, almost two and a half hours. I was just lying down, staring into thin air, just mm-hmm. thinking. <laughs> then you I'll went through a lot of mental torture. <laughs> oh Lord, then class will humble you, no matter how good you are. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> then I received calls, other calls from my other tutors, like Sister Mimi. Yes, I received a call from her. She was also laughing at me telling me how she, what she also went through mm-hmm. when she wrote her exams in India. And where she, so I became okay at a certain point. And then my host, my host came around and she was like, Lisa, since you came, you haven't gone around to see anywhere. So today, before you leave for the airport, you have to at least go around. So she showed me certain places I can go to, certain safe places. And then I went out for a little bit. And then when I came back, I felt I was very okay. Even though I was feeling, hmm, this thing. I came back, I was okay. And then I prepared to leave for the airport. So that's the journey. (laughs) Wow. So when did you officially now find out that you passed? And who, how did you do that? I came back. Then the next day, I was on phone checking how I could get access to the result, the quick result. Then Madam Vida messaged me to check my result. And I knew, I'm sure she had checked it for me already. Because she sent me congratulations. And I said, Madam Vida, me, I don't like that. I've not checked. I've mm-hmm. not checked myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you're sending me congratulations. We, we, are, we are very advanced. We have <laughs> things we do. We are, we are research and information hub. So... <laughs> We have it all. We have all the info we need. Always. So Madam Vida said, congratulations. She said, hey, Madam Vida, me, I don't want any AUBL. Then I'll go. Then it is failure. Then I can't come and look at your face again. <laughs> so she sent me the link. And I was on my bed. I was on my bed. I just raised the phone up, entered. It's just some simple things you have to enter. Your last, your date of birth and some certain things. Then I entered and then it just popped up. And then I looked at it. I was just holding the phone up, looking at it, and I was like, no. <laughs> I, you doubt, you I, doubted yourself too much. I, I went back, I went back, and then entered my particulars again, and I checked again. And then that was when the crying started. I got up from my bed, went to sit in the middle of my hall, and I was crying. <laughs> oh, Lord. Lisa, so, you're so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> So, you cry and tears of joy. <laughs> oh, I, I cried. <laughs> so my my siblings, my parents came around. They were they were thinking that you failed. I failed. <laughs> so then I gave them the phone and they were like, ah, why are you crying? And I said they don't know. I started crying. Then they they joined me. Some of them were crying. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family of drama. <laughs> I can't do it with you people. Oh. They're all crying. <laughs> oh. So that is how I got to check my results. And then I found out that it's a pass. It's a pass. I messaged saying, my say, I said, I told you when you were worrying, I told you. And I said, we thank God because I believe it's God. Because one thing I did was when I went to sit by my computer, and even before I took this exam, I told God that, God, you know where I'm from. You know my family. You know that I did this on my own. Some people are sponsored by agencies, but I've gone through this on my own. So God, let this computer favor me. I'm not saying that the learning aspect is part too, but <clears throat> spiritually, God is also part. So I told the computer that when I sat down, I just told the computer that you have to favor me. You have to favor me. 
And all the questions I was getting, I think they were favor questions because Madam Priscilla, that's what I was thinking I was failing because the questions I was getting, I felt they were on an easier level. Uh -huh. So that's why I got out and I was down. Pray, yeah. Whatever anybody believes in, do yeah. that. Prayer yeah. counts, you do your work, Prayer. you can sit and study. Some people go and write it and they fail. And these are very exceptional students back in school yeah. and even yeah. in their job and they write and fail. So favor counts and whatever your faith is, believe in yeah. that, say a prayer whilst you are studying. Yeah. So because some of the questions, if you meet them, yeah. you will fail. They are so <laughs> hard, you yeah. will fail. The, mine was, I would say it was hard, but I, I also overly prepared. So, but it were hard questions. <laughs> and not really, some people will fail that question hands down. Yeah. I was yeah. getting a lot of prioritization and the level of of yeah. hardness. It was just increasing and increasing. But and when I left that room, I felt confident. I knew I was gonna I know I was gonna pass because I put all my life into it. Yeah. So yes, it's a proud UPC product. She has passed her NCLEX. And you know, we offer so many services. After you pass her NCLEX, you can always reach, reach out to us. Even if you did not go through our program, you can always reach out to us. We are able to connect you to employers in the USA to give you a job. So let's talk about the academy. You've mentioned some names, say uh, you might have quoted. No, talk a little bit about the NCLEX, the UPC NCLEX Academy, how beneficial it has been for you. And if you would recommend it to others too. Um, with the UPC Academy, I joined, that was um, last year in March, and it was a four-month program. We had um, about four tutors. With the Academy, I was prepared, like from, let's say, when we say baseline, I didn't know, when I started to learn from NCLEX, I didn't know what specifically I should learn. I didn't know where I should start from. And the truth is, U.S. Um, education system based on the NCLEX is so different from what we write for our uh, nursing and midwifery council exams in Ghana. So different the practices are different. I know that NCLEX is a very practical and safety conscious exams. So then they prepared for the four month classes. They'll prepare you, they'll nurture you as if you are now starting, you don't know anything, start you from the baseline you start and then they'll let you work on some examination topics that you really need to um, prepare yourself to write the NCLEX. And then um, with the tutoring tool, they have uh, made it such a way that you have videos to watch, you have learning materials, a lot of resource materials, but most of the time they'll tell you to narrow it because they don't want you to learn broadly and then confuse confuse yourself. So if you depend on them and then you listen to what they say. Any advice to future nurses who are here to take in class and anything they should know or they should do, any lessons you've learned, and if somebody wants to take in South Africa, anything, any advice at all would be helpful. So my best advice to anyone who would take NCLEX is to one, rely on an organization such as UPC. Because with UPC, you get to meet people who help you achieve your goal. They are not in for your money, but they are in to push you, to give you all the, um, to give you all the support you need to get to where you want to be. When it comes to tutoring, they are there. When it comes to organizing your documents, processing, even they can go to the length of going to your school and doing all those processes that you need to be working around for you. So UPC is the best when it comes to preparing for NCLEX. So that's the first thing I would say. And then when it comes to um, when it comes to NCLEX, one thing you need is patience. Because <laughs> if you don't have patience, at a certain point, you just leave it and then decide to go and do other things. Because you feel that the process is too lengthy. Because as of now, I meet other colleagues or friends who want to also go through the process and they are like, ah, Lisa, this process is too lengthy. Like, I want everything to be very fast for me. But I'm like, it depends on what you want. Some people want short processes, some people want long processes, and it depends on your strength. And with this process, when it comes to the monetary aspects, it's even very good how it goes because it's at every step at every point in time. Let's say at this point in time, if you don't have money, you communicate to whoever is managing you at UPC, then they know how to go about it for you. It's not like you are paying 
a million or an amount at once so that the process goes through for you it's a step-by-step -step process so one main thing you need is patience patience is one main thing you need and also with the learning aspects you need to identify sources that have been proven to be very good because they will help you to build up your content aside from your tutors the tutors will help you they'll let you learn the basics and everything and groom you to a certain level you also have to um, identify other sources example sample nursing nexus nursing and some other um youtubers who are nurses and also um, enable you to explore the contents very very well and all i would say to whoever is um planning to write nclex is that this um journey is not easy but you have to put in your all because if you put in your all at the end of the tunnel you are going to see the light it's not going to be easy it's going to be full of emotion it's not every day that you feel like taking a book to read it's not every day that you feel like learning some people are mothers so most of the times when i see the married women and those with children who are striving to write and because i'm very proud of them because they are doing very very well so it just comes with the um the push and the drive to um get to wherever you want to do right and clicks and pass and then you move on with your life so this is the little i'll have to say to whoever wants to write anything thank you very much lisa for joining us and for you watching who is here to embark on this journey ours is self-sponsorship basically you pay all the cost involved but the good thing is at the end of the day when you have an employer and you're able to bargain how much you want to be paid all those costs involved will be reimbursed that is what the ideal situation should be so it's just like taking money and investing and reaping the results all that cost involved just keep your receipts and show to employer and they will reinvest all that and it is totally worth it it is doable people have done it when you are with an agency and they're giving you contracts open your eyes read those contracts and know what you are signing yourself into some of them are not are not what they seem to be if you want to register go to our website once more www.usrmpathwayconsult.com and thank you to all who have been on this channel congrats to all who have enrolled with upc and passed and go to our social media we are on linkedin we are on instagram we are on facebook we are on twitter the name is usrm party consult follow us and we'll bring other people to the channel to share their success story once more congratulations our us Aaron from up Lisa. and then we cannot wait to interview again when you finally make it to america thank you for your thank time you. thank you very much madam Tesla. thank you for the time too i'm really grateful <laughs> we had to thank you for being on our channel yes thank you i really appreciate it not everybody's willing to share the process until they finally make it here but you're able to do that and i appreciate it thank you thank you